Missus gives me a pass to do a little food shopping. I walk down the road, and nobody know my name is Slave. My hair is straighter, my alabaster skin paler, and they never guess my name is Slave. My husband is allowed to visit me on occasion. He's a hire out, hires out his time, but his master keeps the money. As a hire out, my husband's a slave, but free. As free as a black man can be in Macon, Georgia in 1848. Master and Mrs. Good to me. So my man, he comes, comes in the back way and sat with me for a spell in the kitchen. I'm standing there with my hands in hot water, soap up to my elbow. I look over at him, smiling at me, talking. I don't know what he's saying. I'm barely listening, I'm barely breathing, and in a voice not my own, in a voice just below a whisper, I hear myself saying, Will, I want to be free. Silence. I face him, hands still in the soap. Will, I want to be free. He's no longer smiling. His eyes search my body, then his eyes search my eyes, and I speak again. This time, just above the whisper, Will, I want my freedom. Whoa, now. Nah. What you say? I want my freedom. Woman, do you know what you asking? I ain't asking, I'm telling. Will, I will be free. Silence. This man, half slave, half free, is silent, silent as stone, silent as death. This man, Half slave, half free, black, blacker than coal, blacker than a moonless night. My black man says nothing, but his eyes well with tears and he nods. <laughs> Freedom is a sweet thing. When I walk down the street, folk look at me. They see my white skin, but nobody know my name is Slave. I stand before the looking glass, amazed to see a white Southern gentleman Staring back at me, my husband as my slave, impossible to be. Yet in this ruse of play, together we will flee. We board the train, first class, and I avert my eyes, shielded with green spectacles, lest anyone get wise. My shorn head in a beaver hat, I turn toward the skies and pray for journeying mercies to keep us in disguise. Across Mason's and Dixon's line, my heart then skips a beat. I glance at William, face like stone beside me in the seat. I wonder if our souls can rest, but jubilant our feet upon God's earth in blessed peace, no more to sound retreat. 
Philadelphia, and Boston. We seek to be secure. The fugitive slave code lurking behind most every door. We head on up to Halifax on Nova Scotia's shore. And there, more Yankee prejudice we find we must endure. So on, across an ocean, our running never ends. Running a thousand miles for freedom to find trustworthy friends. Shall England give us succor? A home she finally sends? Running a thousand miles for freedom Humanity amends. There are many chronicles of ingenuous escapes from slavery, but none of them more than the audacious Ellen and William Craft. A husband and wife team from Macon, Georgia, who defies slave law by a daring role reversal and role play. On a fateful December 21st, 1848, Ellen, in the guise of an invalid, white, southern gentleman, and her husband, William, as her manservant, venture north first class by train. After stopping in Savannah, then Baltimore, and prolonged stays in Philadelphia and Boston, they arrive in Halifax, Nova Scotia in 1850, along with 14 other escaped slaves whose names have now been lost to history. Ultimately, the crafts settle in Liverpool, England.